This is Donald Trump when he was running for president. It wasn't the Iraqis. Uh, you will find out who really knocked down the World Trade Center because they have papers in there that are very secret. You may find it's the Saudis. Okay. This is Donald Trump after he became president, sword dancing with the Saudis while cutting billion dollar arms deals with them. Regardless of whether you think 9-11 was an inside job, a genuine terror attack, or some combination of the two, candidate Trump was onto something. Continually emerging evidence that was previously withheld suggests certain members of the Saudi government had some degree of involvement in the 9-11 attacks. Yet now, as President Trump continues to sound off against extremism, he maintains close ties to the country he himself implicated in terrorism against the United States. Who blew up the World Trade Center? It wasn't the Iraqis, it was Saudi. I mean, take a look at Saudi Arabia, open the documents. We ought to get Bush or somebody to have the documents open because frankly, if you open the documents, I think you're going to see that it was Saudi Arabia. So how is the avenging 9-11 and subsequent terror against the West in ways Bush and Obama didn't? He's not. The president may be singling out Qatar for funding terrorism, a nation that, along with Saudi Arabia, was implicated in Hillary Clinton's leaked emails for funding ISIS. The emails revealed that Saudi donors, among donors from other countries, were backing Sunni radicals like ISIS. The Saudi government has been implicated in the export of their extreme, violent ideology around the world, including the UK, which has suffered a slew of terror attacks. For all of Trump's talk of draining the swamp and criticizing Clinton for taking money from the human rights abusing Saudis. These are people that push gays off business, off buildings. These are people that kill women and treat women horribly. And yet you take their money. He's conducting business as usual. Both the U.S. and British governments continue to authorize massive weapon sales to the head-chopping Saudis, while the British in particular refused to release a report on extremism in the U.K. despite the pleas of 9-11 victims and families who are confident the secrecy is because the Saudi cash cow is implicated. But he's destroying ISIS, some of his supporters might counter. Sure, he's killing thousands of civilians, a surefire way to radicalize survivors, in his quest to kill terrorists. A quest Bush and Obama also pursued, and that Iran, Trump's arch enemy, is having a great deal of success in. But what's the point in trying to kill off ISIS when you're cozying up to a government that shares some of the terror group's fundamentalist, extremist, violent ideology and spends billions promoting it outside their borders? But he has to work with the Saudis, some might retort. They're our allies. Right, but if Trump is simply keeping up with prior established norms and power structures, is he any different from the swamp he promised to drain? No, he is not. Like every other U.S. ruler before him, he's proving the U.S. ruling class is far more concerned with power than principle. If you think the way to stop extremists is to work with extremists, or that getting hundreds of billions of dollars of investments into the United States and jobs, 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 is worth arming extremists who have no problem killing innocent people, you might be falling into this trap. But look, I don't blame this solely on Trump. His course of action is the same as anyone else who might attempt to take on the U.S. machine. They will inevitably succumb to the powers that be, the petrodollar, the military-industrial complex, and the inherent rotting corruption in D.C. May the U.S. stop empowering extremists, and may the victims of 9-11 and the innocents killed in the name of avenging 9-11 rest in peace.